Hey you. Yeah, you. Heard you want some land battles. Well, good news for you, I got a land battle here today. We've got Grand Cathay facing off against the Ogres. Remember myself versus Sir Ogmund. I've gone with a very basic Cathayan build here. We've just got five peasant long spears up front, five peasant archers, three grand cannons, and five jade halberds in the back. Again, very basic. Dragon blooded Shugen Gun Lord is here. No additional casters because my number one spell is going to be this Ancestral Summon unit. And summons are one of the only spell types that are not affected by spell mastery. You can see that we are focus firing on the ogres of my opponent here. Though right off the bat with the cannons doing some huge damage. He's got several ogres with iron fists. Looks like four iron fists, some gorgers. Mornfang Cavalry, Noblar Trappers on the wings with two in the center, and a Scrap Launcher, some more Lead Belters over here, some Saber Tusk packs flanking up and around my right flank. So yeah, again, the idea here is this is basically like a dwarf build, right? We have, except instead of, you know, just basic armored infantry, we have all anti-large units and cheaper archers. Uh, instead of like more expensive crossbows with lots of cannons and a flying caster so it's really not like dwarfs at all when you actually stop and think about it but focus fire of the Cathayan cannons definitely very legit here in the center we're gonna focus on scrag on this initial and just go for some egregious lord sniping scrag is definitely a good enough size target that the Cathayan cannons can hit pretty consistently especially given the fact that with harmony they do get some extra fire rate right if we go ahead and look here reload skill on ranged units is what you get out of harmony so it is actually very good to have uh, but you can see here the archer fire is able to already push back those Noblars. Though the Noblar scrap launcher is definitely doing some serious damage in the front line. Looks like we may end up losing outs on some peasants and peasant archers here already. You can see I've gone full new box pretty much. Just facing my halberds directly back as they brace against the saber tusks. Some pretty brutal shots as well coming from the uh, lead belchers. But you saw my lord fly over there and we've summoned the ancestral warriors. So this spell... For Cathay, I don't know how much use you'll actually see out of it in Domination, but <clears throat> potentially it is pretty useful. And in general, you know, giving one more elite anti-large unit uh, against a faction like Ogres, which is obviously going to be countered by anti-large, Ogres also don't have that much magic damage, so ethereal units are quite good against them. These guys are just ethereal celestial dragon halberds. Um, They've got Charge Reflect, obviously, 75% uh, physical resistance, and do cause terror, which is quite nice. Of course, zero armor being ethereal, but still very solid stats overall. We're going to get them into combat with that Scrap Launcher. Uh, their Summon Timer you saw there is just about to run out, but checking back in the main part of the battle here, you can see the uh, defensive geometry starting to fall apart a little bit, but at the same time, we're holding back the Ogres reasonably well. Gorger's coming through, still relatively healthy. We've lost uh, one cannon and another cannon just about down. Scrag also managed to survive, at least momentarily. The Shugen Gun Lord trying to get into combat against him, but getting screened quite well by the Ogre. She's going to unleash some little magical fire. Ooh, the Ogre's literally just kicking the cannons apart, though. Just blowing up the Cathayan cannons with their feet. Very brutal stuff. Uh, the Jade Halberds, though, still relatively secure. Uh, we will start to take some armor-piercing damage from the Gorgers, but anywhere where we can, we're just going to turn and fire with the Peasant Archers. You know, normally with other factions, I might be trying to maneuver these skirmishers away so that uh, they're not in harm's way, but given especially that the Archers are relatively cheap, and I want them here so that my melee units stay in harmony. That melee defense buff puts these halberds up to 43 melee defense, which is a significant enough difference that it does matter uh, in melee units, especially when you're going to be taking a lot of damage, like from ogres, high weapon strength. That scrap launcher, unfortunately, was able to maneuver away from the halberds, and you can see kind of where they all dropped in the little circle out there. Uh <laughs> So uh, I do have uh, one more Celestial Halberd summon, though, and who are we going to use it on but Scrag himself popping him right in the center as he tries to maneuver away. He's going to bop a few of them out of the way, but Scrag has been terrified. He is not immune to psychology, so he got terrored, terrified and then just straight up routed uh, those Celestial Halberds. Let's see, how much uh, damage did they end up doing? These Ancestral Warriors, 644 value. 
is quite a bit, and not to mention the other one, probably about a thousand, close to a thousand damage value just killing those lead belters, although they did come back with six unit models and have been providing some pretty brutal damage. At this point, I was feeling pretty comfortable with my chances to win, but at the same time, I'm almost forced into a <clears throat> situation where... You know, I'm going to be somewhat strung out and out of position, which is where Cathay starts to get weak. You can see most of my units are out of harmony at this point, other than this kind of center pocket right here. Um, and the Ogre's mobility and shock shooting here is starting to worryingly wear away a few of my units. It's almost like uh, against the Wood Elves a little bit, right? When you start to get in that late phase of the battle, your units get drawn out and spaced out and isolated. The, the Wood Elves, or in this case, the Ogres can then kind of try and concentrate force, find those isolated units, and deal as much damage as possible, but in order to finish things off, I really need to get rid of Scrag to be able to give a big leadership hit to the Ogres. Ogres generally have relatively poor leadership um, as a faction. Scrag going to go ahead and drop the fist out there, but not before he falls. Uh, the Noblar uh, trappers are trying to do their best to protect, but they were not able to. With Scrag down, and that's going to cause leadership issues. You can see all these Ogre forces are going to be suffering from that Lord recently died penalty. So, uh, not great, but the Sled Belters are still holding for the time being. And despite my early summon doing a ton of damage to them, they still were able to come in here and get 118 kills and only 300 value, which doesn't really make sense to me, but there you go. Um, some more shots landing there on those Jade Halberds. Mornfang Cavalry also coming in for a rear charge. The uh, Massacre buff gets popped on those Noblars, so they actually cause terror. They're able to terror, terror out away some of those Halberds. So, again, I'm a little bit worried here, but we still got, like, one more pretty healthy Jade Warrior. And more than that, the fact that the Dragon-Blooded Lord is still at full HP, more or less, is weighing so heavily on the balance of power. Uh, characters tend to have an outsized effect on the balance of power because there's so much value concentrated in one unit and especially if they're spellcasters it sort of measures their power a little bit differently but anyway dragon blooded lord moving in to try and finish off the knob trappers again just try and get to army losses at this point i'm also pushing up with this little contingent it's all within harmony try and get keep those peasant archers within range of all these other units so that they can just buff each other up also, the Peasant Archers need to move up and try and shoot those Lead Belchers if we can, or even the Mourn Fangs would be pretty good targets as well. I didn't even notice. These are actually the Iron Fist Mourn Fangs. They've managed to get pretty good value, but given how expensive they are, they still haven't paid for themselves. <clears throat> and once the Mourn Fangs route, yeah, you can see the Lead Belchers shatter, and unfortunately for Sir Agamund, he does hit army losses there. Had he not hit army losses, he might have had a slim chance of coming back and winning there, but I don't think he could have killed my Lord. Um, even with a, maybe a surround of the Mornfangs could have done it, but uh, with the Lead Belters getting uh, shown off the field, I think it was too much. Great performance from the Scrap Launcher, though. Uh, definitely the Iron Blaster is more OP, and you should probably be taking that instead, but once it, it gets a cost increase, the Scrap Launcher will also be pretty cost-effective and fairly decent at taking out sort of area uh, low-armor infantry targets. So, uh, yeah, the Iron Fists also, considering they just walked into... Uh, overwhelming fire there still did okay one of them ends up paying for themselves uh Noblar trappers pretty good value in general they're one of the best units on ogre kingdoms rosters that ranged attack and the extra little ability they have means they are very good value even over the regular Noblars. although both i think are pretty decent gorgers not paying for themselves is fairly surprising but uh, scrag kind of getting wrecked there is part of that i think and also just the fact that, I mean, my build is like half all anti-large units. Um, yeah, of which many of the Jade Halberds paid for themselves. Some of them got pounded pretty hard. Most of the peasants got pounded pretty hard, but they only cost, what, 350 So it's not too hard to make them pay for themselves. A lot of them do. The peasant archers, same thing. Very cheap skirmish units can pay for themselves relatively easily, even though most of them don't. Uh, the cannons, again, same thing. They don't end up actually paying for themselves. The value of the Ancestral Warriors not being reflected here. I have, if I had to guess, probably another like 1200 to maybe 1500 plus value of just on the summons there. So you kind of add that to the Dragon Blooded Lord, and then she is cost effective. But uh, yeah, just fun stuff overall. I still do enjoy land battles from time to time. I plan on showing them from time to time but personally <clears throat> i enjoy domination playing domination quite a bit more it's also sort of the new cool thing so i want to help you guys learn the new system and show off 
as many replays as I can of it so that you get a feel for the game mode, sort of the flow, how it goes, strategy tactics, units, how things are different. But land battles are not going anywhere. They're still available here in multiplayer, in uh, custom multiplayer lobbies, you know, hosted multiplayer lobbies. There'll probably still be some land battle tournaments from time to time. I think Turin even said he was planning on hosting one launch weekend. So keep your eyes peeled for that and more videos on this channel. Be sure to like, subscribe if you want more. Share it with a friend if you found it useful, informative, entertaining, whatever. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.